Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz, and this morning we wake to a rapidly developing tropical cyclone in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Tropical low 09U is expected to become a tropical cyclone today and then continue rapidly intensifying up to Category 2 status before it makes landfall around Centre Island or Robinson River near Borulula on the Northern Territory Queensland border. This is a dangerous cyclone threat to the Queensland and Northern Territory area. There's also a lot of rainfall expected for far Northern Queensland, which we will cover in a couple of minutes. There's timestamps in the chapter section down below in the description. Um, but this cyclone definitely is a significant threat to land right now. If you live between Port Roper, um, across to Borulula, uh, including Robinson River and uh, Big Bong, and then across to Mornington Island as well and Burketown on the Queensland side of things. Make sure you are prepared for a Category 2 strength tropical cyclone to make landfall. And it would be advisable if you can to prepare for severe tropical cyclone conditions if you live closer to where the storm center is expected to make landfall. As you can see with wind observations right now, there are tropical cycle, or there's hints that this is actually a tropical cyclone. The center of circulation is located about here where the cursor is right now. It's deep into the Gulf of Carpentaria now, but already with some strong gusty winds over Groot Island, 20 kilometers an hour, probably gusting up towards 50, and then down here on Centre Island, which is way out of the thick of things, already approaching cyclonic winds, and even up towards uh, what's it called, Cape Wessel up here, wind still around 60 kilometers an hour. So this is very likely a tropical cyclone um, as per peak wind speeds right now. And it's probably gonna get upgraded to Tropical Cyclone Megan sometime later today. And when it does, there will be coverage on this channel. So make sure you are subscribed. Um, this tropical cyclone, we're gonna take a look at the wind forecast right now before, as I promised, we will take a look at the rainfall forecast. Uh, wind speeds are expected to max out at around 110, 115 or so kilometers an hour before a landfall on Center Island, um, probably around Sunday evening into Monday morning. It is going to be a very slow moving tropical cyclone as well. So rainfall around the landfall site is going to be very high uh, to extreme accumulations, probably up towards a meter of rainfall in one or two locations as this tropical cyclone makes landfall. It's definitely something that's caught us very much um, out of of, uh, out of the blue. We didn't really expect this system to become a strong tropical cyclone of category two proportions or more. It's still not likely to escape category two status or more, but definitely with how it's been developing, it looks like it is going to be about that 10 to 15% stronger than what we were expecting yesterday. And if that gets up to much more, we're definitely gonna be looking out for a stronger than expected system. So you can see the storm's just meant to gradually intensify until about Sunday, until it looks like it tries rapid intensification just before a landfall on center island, probably at around 6 p.m. local time before moving inland on the Northern Territory at around midnight uh, Sunday or Monday. The GFS forecast is pretty similar now in terms of whereabouts and also timing. They're calling for a landfall about eight hours early on the um, Northern Territory side of things, closer to Borulula, and at a relatively similar intensity. As I've said before, the GFS generally underestimates tropical cyclone intensity by around 40 to 50 percent. So if you were to add 40 to 50 percent on these peak wind gusts of 120 kilometers an hour, you get pretty much what the Eastern Wolf is expecting in terms of maximum wind gusts of 175 kilometers an hour. Those are very destructive wind gusts and will cause significant property damage to unprepared properties um, and uh, homesteads and sheds up in this area. I know it's not a very populated part of Australia where the storm is expected to be making landfall. There's only a couple of thousand residents up here, but it's big business in terms of farming. So if you do have sheds, make sure they are adequately prepared for these sort of wind speeds. You've kind of only got today, unfortunately, this is one of these systems that's really taken us out of the blue. So you're gonna have to spend all day today preparing for the absolute worst, which would be a category two, a three strength tropical cyclone landfall here. As we've seen, before in the Gulf of Carpentaria, these systems can blow up like crazy. They can round out some of the most uh, beautiful structures. We saw that with Cyclone Monica. We've seen it before in other tropical cyclones. This system's not gonna have the time to do something like that, but it will certainly be on the way to doing that as it approaches landfall. So it is advisable in a situation like this to prepare for the absolute worst, even if it is unlikely to occur. And in this situation, the worst case is probably a category three strength tropical cyclone landfall. Make sure you are preparing for wind speeds approach 170 kilometers an hour for anywhere between Port Roper, including Groot Island, across to Borulula, inland to Robinson River, the Queensland Northern Territory border, across to Burketown, and then 
maybe even up th towards Corumba on the Queensland coastline. That would also include Mornington Island. The peak wind gusts will be remaining around Centre Island and Borulula and also into Robinson River. They're not expected to move too far inland either. It will be a small system and it will fall apart upon landfall. Um, and it's not expected to be a big system in terms of a huge wind swathe. Uh, but still though, just make sure that you are prepared for the absolute worst. If it wobbles a little bit, then the, there will be a big change in what wind speeds are expected. But what I have to really just hammer home right now before we do take a look at the rainfall forecast, especially for far northern Queensland as well, is the structure of this system. The infrared satellite imagery is suggesting some very cold cloud tops. This means that we've got some very strong convection um, around the centre of the system. This is some very strong convection even by Australian storm standards. And this means that we've already got some very strong thunderstorms moving around the centre, uh, meaning that this is a rapidly intensifying system. This has caught me out of the blue and I should have seen this yesterday with how the system was performing and that should have just sprung up all sorts of alarm bells in terms of how the system was intensifying. It's definitely a category one strength tropical cyclone as per wind speeds, peak wind speeds right now, and it's probably approaching category one status as per the Bureau of Meteorology's gale force wind rule. So it is likely going to be upgraded to tropical cyclone Megan very shortly as per the Bureau of Meteorology. And the second I get off work today, I will be making a video to cover this system in much more detail as it makes its final approach to landfall. Now, just briefly, we'll touch on rainfall for the uh, Northern Territory side of things. They're expecting an awful lot of rainfall over the next five days uh, from this tropical cyclone landfall. You're talking 800 to 1,000 millimetres around the landfall site, and that is plausible considering the uh, slow moving motion of this tropical cyclone and the fact that it's gonna have some very strong thunderstorms. It'll be dumping some very heavy rainfall, that's for sure. And then you're talking totals 400 to 800 millimetres around the outside on Groot Island in towards Burulula and Robinson River. Expect some moderate to major flooding around the landfall site and inland as well and then minor to moderate flooding across a lot of the northeastern extremities of the Northern Territory. It's going to be an awful lot of rainfall uh, around this system. Now, over the next 12 hours, the Cape York Peninsula remaining relatively dry by the looks of things. Uh, the rainfall is up further north. It's around Cooktown and Lockhart River right now. Um, it's the convection that's kind of inflowing into this system, the inflow features of this tropical cyclone. It's got me really concerned in terms of rainfall here. I know it doesn't look like much compared to this tropical cyclone over here, um, but you're looking at this just heavy, moderate to heavy shower activity that's going to be streaming ashore on far northern Queensland over the coming couple of hours and days and that's going to be heading further south as this tropical cyclone moves further south as well. You're going to be seeing these onshore winds uh, really increase the amount of rainfall especially across this evening and into Sunday and Monday and then also into Tuesday around the Cairns, Atherton, Innisfail, Tully and down towards Lucinda area and that would also include locations up toward Port Douglas as well. Expect a lot of rainfall up there especially throughout Sunday morning and afternoon and then into Monday morning as well and by Monday evening looks like it slowly eases out inland but it, it remains around the coastline so Sunday, Monday and Tuesday expecting 50 to 100 millimetres around Cairns and Cooktown um, and then down towards Cardwell as well and that would lead to three day rainfall accumulations approaching 300 millimetres around Innisfail and Belen and Kerr, 280 to 300 millimetres there. Cairns itself up to 80 millimetres, I reckon that that might be lowballing it at this time I reckon and there's a little bit more rainfall in store for Cairns than what's actually on the forecast here. And then down towards Innisfail as well. Typically the wettest part of Australia, you're talking about 150 to 200 millimetres down there. Some pretty significant rainfall totals are also possible on top of what's forecast here. The models generally can't get the detail that's necessary for the mountainous regions around Cairns. And that's why you've seen locations pick up dramatically more rainfall than what's initially been forecast around there. So again, make sure you're staying safe. There is certainly the risk of minor to moderate flooding through Sunday, Monday and Tuesday and that might lead to moderate flooding on Monday and Tuesday as well um, outside of the areas that are affected by very significant rainfall accumulations. It's not really widespread among the forecast models. The GFS is not totally on board with this but the Axis G3 model really calling for a lot of rainfall as well um, around the Cairns area. So again, the rainfall is fairly certain at this time over the next three days and once you start getting into the 10-day forecast, the rainfall forecast becomes a little bit more uncertain but that's going to 
going to be the subject of another video because that is around seven or eight days uh, time from now. But it looks like by next weekend, there's going to be quite a lot of rainfall streaming ashore again in the Cairns area from what will likely be another onshore flow type pattern there. Uh, so that's just the heads up for future updates. Once we get through this tropical cyclone this weekend, uh, we'll be straight back focusing on the rainfall in far northern Queensland. So if you're interested in coverage on that, then make sure you are subscribed. And because this is the morning update on this channel, we also do need to touch on the West Australian tropical cyclone threat. This is actually becoming a little bit more of a risk to the West Australian coastline. It's going to be hovering very close to the WA coastline. I believe the Karatha port is already shut, which I think might be a little bit of a bullish move from the port's authority there. It doesn't look like it's going to be causing too much trouble to Karatha, at least today. Um, maybe tomorrow, but definitely not today. So that might be a little bit of a bullish cool there. Certainly going to be a costly one if it doesn't end up being a threat, but a sunny day for Karatha and Port Headland and then down towards Exmouth and Onslow, but you'd definitely be able to tell that there is a cyclone brewing offshore. It'll be more humid than usual. Um, and you could also have some more fresher winds than usual as well. But over the coming couple of days, as the system slowly develops uh, Sunday and Monday, it looks like it just lingers offshore, but it does drive a little bit of rainfall ashore as well, especially through Sunday and Monday, by the looks of things, before it finally starts to weaken off. It might become a tropical cyclone by Wednesday and Thursday, but still, we could be seeing rainfall accumulations approaching 100 millimetres for some areas on the coastline. Very welcome rainfall for areas around Carafa and Port Hedland that have had hardly any rainfall so far this wet season. Um, so yeah, that's certainly some welcome rainfall down there. Exmouth, not so much. They've had some rainfall already from a tropical cyclone um, passage uh, from ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln, but still though, any more rainfall there it certainly will be welcome. It's not going to be drenching the inland communities. It might spark some thunderstorm activities around the goldfields and Gascoigne region of Western Australia, but it's not going to be triggering anything crazy like the remnants of cyclone Lincoln did uh, for parts of the, uh, what would it be, the south interior. Uh, desert really regions of Western Australia and South Australia. Man, was that some crazy rainfall. 500 millimetres, two to three years, and in some places, four years worth of rainfall. Um, that was some crazy stuff. I didn't expect that at all from ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln. Turns out it was a record-breaking system in the end, that's for sure. Um, so again, this if this system refuses to form, which I mean, it's kind of looking likely it's going to refuse to form until probably around Thursday or Friday next week. And, and again, this is just being pushed back further and further on the forecast models. It's pushed back about 24 hours every single 24 hour period. So if this system doesn't get named, um, at all. It's going to extend the drought of cyclones in Western Australian waters. We haven't had a named tropical cyclone, well, since earlier last year, of course, but we haven't had one this tropical cyclone season yet, and I, I imagine that this is approaching or has beaten some kind of record. It has been a very dry season. Average activity for Western Australia is seven tropical cyclones. By now, we should be at at least four or five, and we have had zero. Zip, zero, and zippity-plonk for tropical cyclone activity around Western Australia. So absolutely nothing to speak of there that's for sure. Anyways, that's basically it for this weather forecast uh, today, March 15th, no, March 16th, 2024. We'll really get through the year at this time. There'll be update on the tropical cyclone in the Gulf of Carpentary later on today, as well as this uh, is a significant threat to the Australian continent, so make sure you are sticking around for that. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much to the channel members as well for their continuous support on this channel. Uh, you really help and provide the software necessary to make these videos, so your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your Saturday. Today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.